Hi everyone, Charles from The Food People here. I hope you're all keeping safe and well. It's my great pleasure to welcome cook, writer and owner of Emily Scott Food at Watergate Bay, Emily Scott. Emily joins us today to talk about her journey to Watergate Bay, her inspiration and food philosophy, the Cornish food scene, her new book, See and Shore, and what it means to be on Michelin's radar, and of course her experience cooking for world leaders and royalty at G7 last year. Welcome Emily, it's so good to have you here. Hello. Hi, Charles. Nice to be with you. Um, at The Food People, we're very clear about why we do what we do. We're champions of change, driven every day by our intent to shift the future of food and drink by harnessing the power of trends. And this In Conversation With series is all about talking to others across the spectrum of food and drink to find out more about why they do what they do, how in their way they're championing change and shifting the future of food and drink. So, Emily, it's brilliant to be speaking to you. We've been talking about it for a little while, so great to, great to have you here. Um, if it's okay, let's let's dive in. I mean, let's start with, I mean, you've had three restaurants, you've published a book, you've cooked, as I've said already, for world leaders and presidents, but I'd really like to start with where it all began. How did you even get into this? How did your food journey begin? Um, it's so nice to be here. Thank you. And I'm so glad we have managed to finally get together to talk about all things food related. Um, basically, I think I always loved food. Food was always an important part of growing up and, yeah. and my family. So my mother, my grandmothers were a huge inspiration. Uh, I then wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And I can kind of relate to that now, having young kind of teenagers yeah. who are all in that stage of life going, what should I do? Should I do university? Should I not? And I decided not to. And I ended up working in, a fr in, in, a, in France, in a restaurant in Burgundy when I was kind of 17. Yeah. Uh, and that kind of cemented for me that kind of restaurant life is where potentially I wanted to be. Yeah. So kind of literally in the kitchen, thrown in at the deep end, uh -huh. I kind of learned so much of kind of my style and ethos, I guess, that I use today. Yeah. And um, where did you from... Um being in um, Bordeaux and Burgundy and Provence where did you then go from there where did your journey take you thereafter? <clears throat> I ended up in Cornwall which was was kind of not unexpected because we'd spent a lot of time in Cornwall as, as children and growing up but I ended up um, kind of unexpectedly as one does um, I kind of fell in love with someone and ended up in Port Isaac um, he's a fisherman <laughs> and I unexpectedly ended up kind of moving to Cornwall and starting our life down here together. And that's where it really began, because that was the first time I actually had my own business. So I yeah. decided that I wanted to um, bring people together with with food and with drink. Um, and it was it was the tea room. So it sounds quite provincial. It wasn't. It was quite cutting edge back then because I had the first real coffee machine in Port Isaac. I think. Oh, wow. <laughs> in 1999 <laughs> although that doesn't feel that long ago to me but to lots of people that's archaic isn't it <laughs> but um it began there really and it was kind of you know really really good food done well uh -huh. so it all began in in the beautiful beautiful village of Port Isaac well it is it is it, it is it's absolutely yeah. stunning Port Isaac it really is um your restaurant now is quite literally at the meeting point between the land and the sea it's in the most incredible location but I'm, yeah. I'm really intrigued to know how does this it, it's a it's a clearly a physical connection but also a bit of a metaphorical one as well how does that kind of guide you more broadly as as well as the food that you produce and cook as well I think for me, um, having started by the sea and actually not realising how important that was to me, because I think we take a lot of things for granted. Yeah. And I think with age, I realise now how important that was for me, especially mm. in the beginning. But now to have done this big circle and ended up back, literally the restaurant is built on the sea wall is... Yeah is incredible and, and does feel like it was almost meant to be without romanticizing it too much because the reality of life is, is much harder in yeah. lots of ways. But every day I walk into that restaurant, I think, wow, yeah. it's, it's life not too bad, actually. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a very, <laughs> so it's, it's a very special place, isn't it? It is. And, and it is. There's a strong connection. And I think 
it, it, it's 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 physical but it's also just that feeling of um where things come from and and kind of looking up you know i guess appreciating and looking wanting to look after the world we live in more because we are so close to to such you know a phenomenal phenomenal landscape it's amazing it feels like you're yeah you're you're very close to it you see nature in its rawest form every day yeah, and i suppose completely. it's also your larder as well isn't it in mm -hmm. terms of what it's, it's kind, of, kind of out there which is a it's a, it's a really lovely connection and, and it's ever-changing and that larder so to speak doesn't you know depending on weather doesn't always bring you what you you necessarily had written on your menu or hoping for so <laughs> so that's quite an interesting take on it as well yeah definitely i mean do you feel i mean they some call watergate bay destiny bay and do you feel that it has been actually your destiny your journey has been to get to this point um or i think is that that, too much into it uh <laughs> I, I think i i don't think there's a better location i think it well there's a lots of beautiful locations in cornwall but i think it's up there as one of the best locations yeah that potentially a re for you know for any restaurant i mean there's lots of beautiful ref restaurants in the south coast north coast but for me having such a love for the north coast and um just the opportunity that came my way and it wasn't kind of it's it, it you know will ashworth who owns the hotel we had spoken about a pop-up together we had spoken about opportunities potentially within the bay for me although being yeah not part of the hotel so i'm very very much independent but there was a sense of a kind of collaboration and will i kind of you know i'm very grateful to will because he saw the potential in me and gave me that opportunity so in that sense it's all about people and places and timing i guess yeah yeah no absolutely how would you describe your your philosophy i mean it's a bit of a grand term but your kind of mm. approach i suppose to, to to food and drink your kind of unique slant on it how do you how do you describe well, it i i think for me and again i talk about this a lot is keeping it simple i mm -hmm. just i don't believe in messing around with with ingredients too much um and also it's not just about the food it's for me it's about how you lay a table how you yeah how, the, the place and and more importantly, bringing it's the people that make it. I mean, my restaurant, I quite like it when it's, it's I prefer it when it's full, but I quite like it those mornings when you come in and it's it's all quiet and empty and it's that kind of behind the scenes. It's a bit like getting ready for a, a performance, I guess. Yeah, that yeah. theatre of setting the scene, dressing the set. Uh, so uh, I think it, it's all about the people then that bring the atmosphere and bring the buzz to it. and yeah. and that sense of bringing people together with the conversation, food and wine, those are the greatest things, I think. Yeah, no, they, they absolutely are. Can I just touch on simplicity a little bit more? And, and a lot, um, many people use that term. What does simplicity mean? What does that mean? What are the things that you then would do or wouldn't do, if you know what I mean, when it comes to, when it comes to food? So simplicity doesn't mean that you take any technique away from me. It doesn't mean that you you uh, aren't using um, kind of thought and consideration because with simplicity comes technique because yeah. without that, you, you know, it, it's a disaster and there's nowhere to hide. No. I mean, I talk about fish on a plate. I mean, it's yeah. far more than fish on a plate, but the key for me is taking three or four ingredients yeah. and keeping them you know to the season that they're at their best yeah. going with the ebb and the flow of what the kind of universe so to speak maybe that's a bit deep brings us um but keeping keeping things stripped back and and not necessarily overpowering really considering what you're putting with different ingredients and kind of you know marry them to, to kind of what they're meant to be with so to speak yeah, yeah. um uh, so it's it's not just about you know one ingredient and putting it in the oven and putting it on your plate no. it's far more than that yeah but it's about stripping it back and keeping i guess the the um 
I kind of my blank canvas in my mind is always quite neutral. Yeah. And then you can kind mm -hmm. of build on that. Yeah. No, okay. That's brilliant. Thank you. Um just and we've mentioned um a few moments ago the kind of Cornwall and the Cornish food scene. It feels like it's absolutely thriving. I'm on the on the doorstep, on the border in Devon and getting down there wherever I can. But it feels there's something really special that's happening down there. What what is that for you? Um what why is why is it thriving and perhaps how has it changed? I think since I've been here and that's kind of over 20 years, I think there was always potential, huge potential for Cornwall. It, it's always had it, but I think because we feel slightly out on a limb well we did yeah years ago and it was always that kind of oh it took five hours to get to Cornwall and it's the end of the world type thing um I think that's changed with how the world's changed and and yeah. being connected not just mm -hmm. obviously <laughs> roads are better but with social media and all that brings the good the bad and the ugly um we can showcase so much more yeah. And it's so much more accessible because people can see what they're going to kind of get almost before they've got here. Yeah. Um, but the food scene, I, I mean, Cornwall is a special place because as soon as you cross the Tamar, you do slightly feel like you're coming into a kind of country, not a county. Yeah. It does feel like that. And I'm not Cornish. Yeah. So, you know, I, I'm not kind of <laughs> saying I'm Cornish and, and, and Cornwall's the best. I really feel that having been an incomer and I'll always be an incomer I'm never a local definitely um even though I married a Cornishman and my children are basically Cornish and never 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 treated like a local so but but I I have always sensed that magic and that magic has just grown over time and then with the chefs like uh, obviously Rick who has been a trailblazer in, in bringing Cornwall to the forefront in so many ways and such a hero he's, and he's such um, a nice man because he's very generous yeah. with with how he kind of you know especially when I've just filmed with him he was very generous about kind of and excited about people coming on that feel the same way about him yeah. in Cornwall yeah. and then Nathan Outlaw and Paul Ainsworth I mean these are these are hugely talented chefs that have just put Cornwall on the map. So it's an incredibly exciting place to be, but it's so close coast to coast and that's yeah. what makes it so exciting. You know, you can be in North Cornwall and, and within kind of an hour and a half, you can be in Land's End. I mean, yeah. and then the South Coast, the soft South to the, the rugged kind of, you know, unpredictable North. There, there's so much happening. So yeah. it's so incredibly diverse, so isn't it? it really is. In, Cornwall in, is the star, really, yeah. and we're just lucky enough to live here. <laughs> I'm really uh, keen to ask you, what gets you to a place where you feel confident to put your name over the door and really to make your your name, the, the, the brand, what, what, what you do? That's that's a, a really bold thing to do. It's in, I mean, it's an interesting question because I, I have been asked that and and I think my my answer now is probably slightly because i i think i'm i'm someone of two halves i'm someone that's very driven quite you know i love business i love working for myself i'm quite commercial mm -hmm. and then the other half of me is very humble suffers deeply from imposter syndrome has has questions everything i do and every day has to take a deep breath into whatever i do because that's just the person I am so I'm just kind of it's quite com and I'm sure a lot of people relate to that I'm not yeah. unique in that but there's this kind of struggle that goes on so when I got the opportunity to write my first book uh and I, yeah I was writing it when I got the opportunity of the pop-up and it just made business sense to me yeah okay. put my name to it because I needed yeah. to sell books <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not that well known you know, I'm quite well known in Cornwall, but, you know, my profile has definitely kind of grown, but I'm still quite grounded that I'm not that well known. But but um, for me, commercially, it was a no brainer. And then the reality of putting my name to the restaurant, well, that was a little bit like, oh, my God, what have I done? Um, but it's OK. It's OK. I'm I'm, whole, I'm standing firm, 
the only thing recently that I found that is a little uncomfortable is that people talk about my restaurant and use my name as if it's not a person. Yeah. And that's quite, that's an interesting, that's yeah. a kind of new thing. Yeah. Because actually I have to remind people that there's a person behind that name. Yeah, yeah. So that, that would be the only kind of thing I feel a little bit like, hello, you know. It's me it's behind that. Just, it's not yeah. a brand, you know, I don't know what the yeah. word brand means, really. All I know is that I've started off from here. I've kind of grown my business. And it hasn't, I've, you know, it hasn't always gone well. I've had a lot of times where it hasn't, you know, worked for me. So actually to be in this position where things are consistently going well is really cool. Yeah. But I've just got to own it. <laughs> That's yeah. all I can say. Well, I think you own it very well and incredibly Thank natural. <laughs> one, one Maybe of some the... therapy might help as well. But yes. it's, 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 you know, it's, it's, it doesn't come, you know, I don't go, yeah, hi. I'm Emily. I'm amazing at all. It's it's it, it, there's a lot of kind of talking to myself, and now I really do sound crazy. By <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Um, um, do you see yourself as a chef or a cook? Um, and and I suppose I suppose the more important bit is what's the, what's the difference for you? <laughs> so I'm very much a chef, but I, and I'm very much in a chef world. I work with very talented chefs within my restaurant but I would definitely consider myself a cook at heart yeah. and that, that that's probably because if you take away everything else that's kind of how I feel if I, I if I didn't have a restaurant if I I guess for me the word cook is is one that nourishes people and looks after people yeah. and I think a lot of people relate to that as, a, as if you're you know if you're if you love cooking, if you're a mother, you know, it, that's a natural instinct. So for me, that comes through. And also within my writing, I would, I would say, I didn't realise that I could write the way I write. I know that sure. sounds a bit odd, but it, but there is a certain kind of storytelling to it. And for me, that very comes from, very, comes very much from me um, as a person, rather than maybe putting my chef hat on. Yeah. Not yeah. that I wear a hat. <laughs> I, no, <laughs> um, I definitely get that nurturing, that nurturing piece, and that that sharing, and and sort of bringing people and family together. That's far more yeah. good, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. When when you think about the, the the restaurant, what is it that you see the restaurant trying to do? How do you want to make people feel um, when they when they come to Emily Scott? So again, very simple. For me, I just want to bring a little bit of joy and happiness yeah. to their lives. That's all I want to do. And and that's genuinely um that's what I'm trying to consistently do. You know, it's difficult because expectations change a little bit. And yeah. the better you do, the more people expect, maybe. And that's a good thing because mm -hmm. I think you should never kind of sit back and think, oh, I've got it. But for me, it, it's just a, a nice place to come. I want it to be a place where people can be relaxed. It's not about fine dining. It's not about tablecloth. I mean, the location of the restaurant, obviously, I've got, you know, the backdrop is amazing. So I don't really have to do a huge amount because it's, it's so beautiful. But um, still, there's that sense of just, I try and really focus on the detail. And, you know, I don't always, again, you know, no one gets everything perfect all the time but we're trying to just create a really lovely place to come and enjoy good food yeah well simple yeah simple yeah and simple. you do it very brilliantly there as well i have to say um and probably sort of following on from that um this series is a bit about exploring i guess a bit about purpose and some of the kind of deeper meaning and kind of motivations um at at this point um what is it that you feel that um, you've been put here to do without making it sound kind of too too grand? Um, how, do you, how do you describe that, the, the Emily oh, purpose? Oh my gosh, I think, uh, I think for me it's all about, I, I like to inspire people to do things they didn't think they might be able to do. Mm -hmm. Because I certainly didn't think that I would 
be uh you know kind of i mean i'm 46 so it's taken a while i mean it's taken over 20 years to quite i was consistently and quietly cooking for a long time in Port Isaac after I had the tea room and sold that and then I had the harbour um, there are many years of you just kind of got on with it and also just I tried to survive because yeah. I, I you know looking after my children everything like that so 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 now I think it's about being I think you can do anything you want to do if you work hard and it's the ability to keep going yeah so, so if I can inspire, especially women in business, and I'm not, a, I'm not going to start banging the feminist drama or anything like that, but I'm re really keen to support women in business who think that they might not be able to do that, but, yeah. you, but you can uh -huh. if, you, if you want to do it. But it's all about choice and kind of sticking to a path, I guess, and, and having, the, it, it's about having energy, creativity, and the right people around you to then, I guess, orchestrate, you know, that to yeah. be able to, to bring it together. No, no, that's fabulous. Well, um, and you touched on it um, just then, um, you contributed a recipe to the, um, what I think is a really, really lovely book, Female Chef. What did that mean to you and why did you get involved? Uh, so I was asked to do do that and I remember getting the email going what they want me to be in it because you know what's been really incredible for me is to suddenly be on the periphery or maybe even if I can be bold and say I might have stepped into the circle now because it does feel very much there's a very there's a very strong London uh, circle of very good yeah. chefs um, high profile chefs and you know they're in London and they are absolutely doing incredible things and being in Cornwall I've always slightly been on the periphery of that because I'm in Cornwall and you kind of work I was never thinking I'm going to work towards that but to be included in this book was incredible because I mean it's just name after name of yeah. chef that most people would know um so I was quite humbled I was I I but then I kind of again it comes back to that kind of just you know, I'm very good at saying thank you very much. It's really important to appreciate things, but also saying actually, yes, that's amazing, and just actually celebrating that rather than kind of questioning it. So, yeah, um, feels like a, a, an achievement of also um, and a recognition of everything that's gone yeah. before as well. I and, think. And I think you've just used the word recognition. It's quite nice to be recognised within um, your kind of. A, gr a group of people that I regard so hard, highly in respect. Yeah. And what's nice is we're all so different. Yeah. There's not one person doing the same thing. No, not no, not at all. It's a, it is. I mean, if if anyone um, in the audience hasn't got that, it's a, a, very good. Um, it's a brilliant book. It really is. It's it's thought provoking and inspiring as well as being filled with some amazing recipes. Um, and I suppose. That, whilst we're on, on the subject of book I'd really um see and sure um how, how did it come come about and and, and what is it because it's it's different from other um you know, cookbooks I, I i think anyway so can you tell us a bit uh, more about that i quite like the fact you think it's different because i don't like i try not to run with the crowd i don't like to i don't i i, I kind of wasn't sure well, I think I want actually seeing sure kind of I knew it was all going to be about Cornwall. Cornwall's yeah. the star of this book. Yeah. But I'd only been planning this book. I remember when I had the harbour restaurant in Port Isaac. Um, I remember saying I'm gonna write a book. And I think from saying that to actually getting a commission, it was about I think it was about eleven years. Wow. So it took me quite a long time because it's not that easy because you've got to there's so many kind of there's so many things you have to kind of tick and do and and it's all about timing and just finding the right publisher yeah. but I was very lucky because I decided to do my own synopsis invest in my own synopsis and then had a small team in Cornwall that um, the photography and the styling with me and then I just sent it to every publisher and I, I got rejected quite a lot did you quite hard but then I thought, well, it's never going to happen. I was quite realistic. I was thinking, oh, you've just got to try. And then it landed on um, Hardy Grant, Kajol, my publisher, her desk. And um, she was just done a cookery book in Scotland. 
um, and she was looking for someone in Cornwall. So it was, mm. it was meant to kind of be, it was quite interesting. Yeah. Um, and what I love about Hardy Grant, their travel and food yeah. which is perfect yeah. because it's that sense of place. And Kaja was amazing because she kind of really gets what I'm trying to do. And that was really important to me. And, and I wanted it to feel real. And also I wanted almost not that I'm asking everyone to buy two copies but I wanted I wanted that book where you'd have one on it like as a kind of so to speak coffee table book Absolutely. Yeah. and and one um in the kitchen yeah. very used and stuff well I've, I've only got one copy but it does serve both purposes <laughs> very no, <well>. that's fine <laughs> <laughs> um, and is there a book two coming Perhaps. There is a book two coming. I've I've signed I've I've signed my name, so that will be May twenty three. Yeah, and, and it takes quite a long time. So I'm kind of I'm not doing very well at the moment. I've done quite a lot of writing, but it's that thing of it's in my head all the time, and and then I have to. It, anyone that writes will understand this. You kind of have to have everything around you, kind of in the right place. It's right. It's OCD to be able to yeah. do it. Yeah, no. So, um, I, I'm, 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 yeah, I, I work maybe a little better under pressure. So I, I, I have some deadlines, but they're not kind of looming. So I'm kind of like, yeah, I'm writing book two. I'll take my time. <laughs> and then it will be like, oh my God. Well, this one can't take you 10 years. You've got to deliver no, it. No, no, this is, and also it's testing the recipes because I always am yeah. kind of testing the recipes like three or four times. Yeah. But I might, I might um, start uh, delegating some get some recipe testers in my life as well how, and how is it how will it be different um because we've already said you know scene sure is quite unique in um in, in in what it offers and it's kind of positioning how will um your second book be different so this book charles is going to be more about me i'm going yeah. to step forward cornwall is going to be there but cornwall cornwall's taking a step back yeah <laughs> <laughs> whatever that means i'm not sure yet Don't worry. it will be more uh and 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 yeah it, i can't say too much but it, it it's going to be more of more of me and and seeing shaw was very much kind of how i came to be in cornwall mm -hmm. uh so it's going to, going to be just more about how i think and feel yeah brilliant look forward to it. um <laughs> thank you <laughs> um i've resisted to this point about asking you about g7 um but um, cooking for clearly world leaders, the royal family. How did it even come about? Um, what was it? What was it like? Um, yeah, yeah. It, it, tell us about it. I'm, I'm, well, it, it was a surprise one actually, because it May twenty one. I was opening the restaurant. The restaurant kind of was delayed because of COVID, but then we we were due to open on the eighteenth. Yeah, and then at the beginning of May. I was just out. I remember actually walking on the beach, and I got an email saying. Um, you know, basically the cabinet office requesting a meeting with me because they were interested in working with me. Uh, and then I had this call and it turned out that I'd been on a long list and then onto a short list. Yeah. And then it was down to two, two other chefs, two chefs, myself and another, the two of us. Um, and they just told me the brief, bringing together um, dinner at the Eden Project, uh, but not just the menus. I had creative control over laying the table, yeah. how I dressed the table, everything. Yeah. I literally, my name was on the menus, my everything that I wanted to, to kind of bring to the party, so to speak, was literally on, on the table. So uh, I got a little bit competitive when I found it was just down to myself and someone else. And then I thought, well, let's just do what I usually do. Yeah. And they were definitely looking um, for so many of the things that I naturally do within my business. So it kind of had my name on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then I found out I got the job and then I had to bring together the menu and various meetings. Yeah. Um, and, you know, one of the most surreal meetings was on site. And I was in the middle of a circle with the cabinet office and kind of the American Secret Service. 
<laughs> and there was me standing there kind of telling everyone how I wanted the evening to flow and how I'd like it to work and yeah. you know basically telling <laughs> telling the American Secret Service that this is how I wanted it to be and then I just kind of you know that was that was quite fun they were amazing they were very lovely to work with and it all went brilliantly but how did how did that <laughs> how did that whole experience feel it sounds <laughs> I think the, 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 the hardest thing is I was, was opening a restaurant and I was yeah. bringing that together. I was short staffed, so I couldn't say, I was never going to say no to it, but I kind of was thinking one day, thinking this is typical of me. I'm not waiting to hear whether I've, I've got a job that I've pitched for. I'm waiting to hear if I'm going to cook for the you know, president of the United States. And that yeah. kind of sums me up because I never do anything by halves. It always seems to be quite extreme. Yeah. But I felt that I'd like been working towards this forever because I'd had a I had had a career also in outside catering yeah. before moving to Cornwall. And then I, I did do a little bit when I was here. I kind of I, I knew what I you know, it, it's something I've done. So I knew I could deliver the job, but it was just then the, the realization that I wasn't just, you know, cooking for I mean I wanted to do the same job I'd do for anyone, but it, obviously with security and yeah and who was involved. I mean, when I got the email through, you know, with President Biden's dietary requirements, that kind of, and I actually found that email the other day, and that was like, that's never going to happen again. <laughs> Keep that. Yeah. Keep that, yeah. yeah definitely. <laughs> and and was, it, was it the team from Emily Scott that actually, um, that actually you know, provided that and, and served and cooked and everything? So, so for me, it was very important that because my name was going to be on the menus and I was delivering everything I wanted it to be, my whole team were involved. And that included um, my children yeah. so, and my partner Mark's children as well. So Rosie and Oscar, um, they served the leaders. They were front of house at the leaders table. So that was quite special for us, oh, having yeah. our yeah. children serve them. My son Finn was one of my chefs. Mm -hmm. uh, Evie was um, kind of on the reception with with a, a team from my front of house as well serving kind of you know the royal family and uh with drinks and i mean it was all quite covid strict all the rules but i had one moment where i could see evie finn was had had come out um oscar was there so i had all my all all our children and then the world leaders the queen and then the roar of president biden arriving and his his kind of all his vehicles and then to sit, suddenly have that moment of like yeah I think I've picked the parent role now I think I've done it there you go guys yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so it was it was amazing because as a team I knew we could do it yeah and they all just rose the challenge because I didn't really tell them until the day before and they knew we had an event but they didn't know really the, um, extent of it <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's so I didn't want anyone to wobble no. because I knew we could do yeah. it yeah Wow, that sounds so incredible. incredible. Yeah, talk about that for hours. Um, yeah. We a slight. There's a bit of a link there between my next question. I mean, we, there's lots of calls for us uh, from kind of government and policy makers, but also kind of scientists and activists as well to um, to make our food system uh, a more sustainable one. And uh, I'm intrigued as to what sustainability means for you and what you do at Emily Scott Food? I think for me it's again I'm going to talk about simplicity but also about consideration it's about about thinking about you know the provenance of everything and I think that we're in a world that moves very quickly and I think sometimes because it's moving quite quickly some things aren't considered enough yeah. and I think it's really important and we you know as, as, as you know I'm trying to be as sustainable as possible and you know kind of waste wise we try and kind of we're not at zero waste you I, I mean I think that's quite hard to achieve but there's so many things you can do if you just think about them yeah. and implement mm -hmm. some you know some some kind of uh kind of a, an ethos surrounding everyone and and the trouble is the whole team has to kind of come on board with that yeah. to, to kind of be able to sustain to su sustain that 
Um, but for me, I mean, I'm predominantly a fish and seafood restaurant. I'm working with um, local producers and suppliers mm -hmm. that, are, that are close to me. And that's what we try and do. Yeah. And, whether, and, and working seasonally is really important yeah. because that means you're getting the best ingredients at the right time. And I'm, I'm hugely, um, you know, I, I, I'd love everyone to be more, more like that, I think. Yeah. And that comes through when dining as well, it, even though it, it, you don't actually necessarily say the words, it, it feels very connected with um, the, the seasons. It feels very rooted in seasonality. What, yeah. um, I mean, just, can you just give us the in conversation with the audience a bit of a flavor of some of your favorite seasonal recipes, even just for this time of year? <clears throat> so, so kind of at the moment, kind of mid, we're kind of mid winter, we kind of spring is, spring is kind of almost start i can almost see spring but not quite yet yeah. so at the moment we've got we've got some lovely fish coming in off the boat we've got gurnard uh -huh. um we've got monkfish on the menu we have got some turbot but they're all being landed and but change every day so if you come to my restaurant it won't necessarily be yeah if i'm serving gurnard one day and we've got a lovely um gurnard very simply done with a, a sous vide sauce which is basically um, a classic kind of onion sauce which is traditionally made with a bechamel so yeah. you kind of cook the onions down but we've taken the bechamel out and used cream so it's slightly lighter still yeah. quite rich yeah but kind of thinking about comfort so we've got kind of fish and and um this kind of sweet to be sauce but if gurna doesn't come then something else will be on so it's yeah. not always the same fish uh, and i'm i love um pudding as well and I think sometimes in restaurants pudding can get can not forgotten but people focus very much on the main event which is important but pudding is very important because that's how you finish a meal yeah so we've got blood oranges at the moment we've got mm. forced rhubarb yeah um we've got I've got lovely lemon pot on the menu oh, because no. um, <laughs> um there's this wonderful supplier on the south coast that's been growing lemons so i've got he arrived with this big box of cornish lemons and wow. they are so delicious they are so uh, they're kind of intense but sweet um it, they're lovely so we've made posset with those um with a cornish varying crumb so it, th there's all always nods to kind of um like cornwall yeah but not necessarily an obvious way um, when I've also got a, um, a rice pudding on at the moment, a coconut rice pudding with okay. rose petals. Yeah. Really pretty, kind of candied rose petals. Yeah. Uh, so kind of come, for me, it's about nostalgia. It's about comfort. Um, and going back to kind of starters and mains, it's all about fish on a plate. And yeah. I talked about that on Rick Stein. And and I, I know I spoke to you earlier about that kind of there is technique within all that and I'm very lucky I'm a head chef that really gets what I'm trying to do and I think we are getting that right I think you won't find a lot of meat on my menu no. we, we tried it actually over kind of the end of last year we tried having more meat on less fish but actually for me it just doesn't feel right no no I, so, I, I can see that I think when you particularly when you you know you walk down you walk down the slope into the restaurant yeah. you just with that backdrop, that is your ex expectation, I think. Yeah, yeah definitely. So that's so we're very much almost to the point where I might even put, you know, kind of in, put that into my kind of wording for my restaurant, seafood mm -hmm. restaurant, just because you know when when we start getting lobsters and crabs, and again that that will be very much on the menu again. And but it but it's not always. I'm not a restaurant that's always going to have everything on because I really want to try. And put things on the menu that are actually coming yeah. in yeah i mean obviously i can get everything i want but i don't i want to try and stay as kind of local and as as true to it as i possibly can yeah as literally as true to what's coming off the which is it's, it's hard in business because i am yeah. running a business yeah but i i don't want to talk about doing something and then not do it well no. so no. we really do and that's why my menu is quite small Yes. You know, we have four four starters, four mains, four puddings. Maybe we'll have we tend to have a special something. We've got some small plates on at the moment, but it's not a big menu because we try and keep everything, you know, consistent and true. Yeah. 
that well and that that very much come that very much comes through you get that sense that it's um it's perhaps different today than it was yesterday and uh, it'll be tweaked and reflect what's yeah. what's available and we're not tomorrow. trying to be fine dining either i mean it's gone that way a little bit i'm higher i've kind of gone slightly higher than i thought i would but that's i think just because i'm trying to get all the elements right everything yeah. kind of comes together and looks so nice um, but you know my take on fish and chip, you know, you know, hake with warm tartar and then chips on the side is it, it, it's it's it, it's not there's no faff or fuss about yeah. it, but it's slightly different to what you'd get if you go to your chippy, which is equally as good. You know yeah. what I mean? So yeah, you you mentioned fine dining there, and and quite quite recently. Um, we're now in the sights of Michelin. Um, how do you feel about that? Um, and bluntly, will you chase a star? Uh, so again, I'm really proud of the restaurant being put in Michelin after like six months of being open. And that's wonderful. A star, the ambitious, competitive person, Yes, thank you very much. I'd love that. But the person that is dealing with daily expectation, I might be that person that says, can I give it back? Because it's so hard. It's so hard. I mean, I'd love for the team. Everyone works so hard to try and create it. And I think a star, the thing is, I think there's a misconception of, of, of what that means. A star yeah. means very good cooking. It yeah. means, you know, come to this restaurant. It's very good. But I think a star in some people's minds means tablecloths and suddenly yeah. kind of service, fine dining service and, and kind of, you know, quiet atmosphere. And to me, that's not what my restaurant's about. Mm -hmm. My restaurant's about being relaxed, very good food, very good wine, beautiful location. And I think that's the misconception. Yeah. So a star, of course, I mean, I'm, you know, what a, that would be amazing. It sounds like but I'm not sure the expect what with what comes with that. I'm I'm not sure the, because I have a lot of that at the moment and I don't have a star. Yeah, and it, it sounds like if if that were to come in recognition for just what Emily Scott food is, then 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 great. But yes, and I and I think that's exactly it. If you can say we've got this star for what we were doing, yeah. not what we're going to change now we've yeah. got a star so yeah. you either just have to learn to be tough and say well this is what we do and just have to kind of um take the good with the bad but I, that for me mentally that that would be a big step up but maybe maybe what i i'm trying to do more in life is just go with it and just yeah. be relaxed about it and just say you know we're not going to change we're doing what we do and and that's you know just appreciate you know just being in michelin was amazing because i think that's a real nod to to what we've been trying to do and it's been really bumpy because of recruitment yeah. um covid you know we've yeah. we've you know we've all been working really hard to keep up the consistency and managing all that brings one last uh, <laughs> question um reluctantly because uh, you need to get into the kitchen and uh, we'll run over time but what does um, what is the looking forward? I mean, we've just talked about all the things that you've done up to this point, um, but thinking about the future, 22, 23, what, what does that look like for you? So I think the key word I keep using to my team is consistency. It's mm -hmm. now about delivering consistently what I'm, I, I'm kind of doing and, and managing expectation. Um, writing my next book i'm collaborating with a few um other people i did a lovely collaboration with rodders which is mm -hmm. quite cool because rodders is so nostalgic to call also yeah, they're wonderful wonderful people to work with um i have a little bit more tv mm -hmm. um which is cool and actually i didn't think i'd enjoy it but actually it's quite it's good fun i, I think I, writing books is is wonderful it's very different to tv but what i want to do is if i can quite have a voice to inspire people to cook then that's really fun and really good um potentially another restaurant i'm toy i'm i'm in this kind of 
kind of thought process of do I just have keep what I've got but where do I go with a second yeah do I go into a city or do I stay in Cornwall do I go to the south so potentially something else yeah but I'm not sure because then I get the days where I think I cannot do any of this <laughs> so it's it's but it will all, I'll always be moving forward though because that's the kind of person I am there'll never be a dull moment <laughs> but sometimes it's good just to kind of just quietly get on with it yeah well it'd be great to see you more on the tv I thought having Nicholas Hedge there <laughs> as uh, as your commie was was a yeah great, no he was, great he was so lovely <laughs> and yeah Sassy Kitchen I think there will be more of that so that that's really nice and uh, I've worked with Matt on a, another series. I think I think I'm on on February the seventeenth. It's Channel Five. Yeah. It's all to do with vegetarian cooking. Oh, amazing! So that was quite fun. So it's you know the main thing though is it, I'm so grateful for these opportunities. Yeah. You know, and and never never say I think in life one should always just say say yes, yeah. even if it's something that doesn't go well or doesn't go quite right or you can never do again. I think yeah. opportunity. It's all about opportunity. Yeah, definitely. Amazing. But um, that concludes this episode of the Feed People in Conversation with Emily. It's been an absolute joy oh, to talk to you. Um, um, Thank you. Um, on behalf of TFP and the In Conversation with Audience, thanks so much for joining me today. It's been really, really good to talk to you. Pleasure, Charles. Thank you so much. Cool. Thank you. So do join our TFP community for the details of all of the latest In Conversation With episodes, as well as the latest free to access food and drink trends for site, visit the foodpeople.co.uk and complete your details at the footer of the page. So on behalf of Emily and myself, thank you so much for joining the Food People In Conversation With, and I'll just leave you with one question. How are you shifting the future of food and drink? Thanks for listening.